The Miami Hurricanes gave us some hope in the game, but man, do I hate losing to Florida State. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. I know it sucks coming off a loss to FSU. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. I was really impressed with Miami's toughness and just how far they've come physically and mentally from last year. Let's not forget how the game against Florida State went last year, but Miami comes up short. Hurricanes lose 27 to 20 in Tallahassee. If you had told me before the game that against a top four Florida State team at Doak Campbell Stadium, that Miami would be in position to tie the game on a final drive with a freshman quarterback, I would have signed up for that. If you gave me that scenario pregame, I would have signed up for that. The fact that any of us on the Miami side actually have the luxury of trying to point to some coaching mistakes or bad calls by the ACC officials as being things that possibly cost Miami the game to even be in that position is something that I do not take for granted. Let me start with the quarterback play because... Wow, I don't think any of us would have predicted the roller coaster that we had during the week that culminated with the middle of that final drive against the Florida State Seminoles. I'm so proud of Emery Williams, the true freshman signal caller, 19-year-old, who we find out on Saturday that he's the starter. He found out on Thursday. I'm so proud of the way he played. And now my heart bleeds for him because he's working his way through what Mario Cristobal described as a significant injury. How did that happen? It happened in the line of duty, my friends. Down seven points late in the fourth quarter, fourth and two. It's literally the most important down and the most important play of the season to this point. Emery Williams puts his body on the line, doing whatever is necessary to stretch and pick up that first down He suffers a painful injury in the process. Left arm, shoulder, I'm not exactly sure. We just know it's it's serious. And, uh, you know, he was taken to a Tallahassee hospital after the game to undergo tests and whatever treatment he needed. So, again, I'm I'm praying for Emery. And also, I'm certainly praying for his family because his parents were there watching the game. And that was obviously a, a tough sight for any of them to have to see. But. That play, that embodies everything that it means to me to be a Miami Hurricane. Emory Williams did that. Williams goes 8 for 23 for 175 yards, two touchdown passes, no interceptions in the game. Now, some people look at that stat line and say, nope, he's not the answer. But let me remind you, this is a true freshman starting in one of the toughest places to play in the country against the best Florida State team in a decade. The moment was not too big for him. He definitely made his share of freshman mistakes in the second half. He had a long cold streak in the second half, but then he responded with an 85-yard touchdown pass to Jacoby George, and he also responded with that fourth down play where he unfortunately got injured. And most importantly with Emory Williams, young man took care of the football. Zero interceptions. That, to me, is more significant than the 8-for-23 completion percentage. Zero interceptions. That, to me, validated the decision that Mario Cristobal and Shannon Dawson made to start him over Tyler Van Dyke. The fade that he threw for the first touchdown to Jacoby George was perfectly executed. That was a big-time throw and a big-time play. It's unfortunate now that Emory Williams likely won't be healthy enough to finish out the year. I can't imagine we see him again this season because... I would love to see where he can take Miami from here. And, okay, when he picks up that injury in the fourth quarter, how ironic is it that after all this, Miami has to turn back to Tyler Van Dyke in that final drive, and they likely have to turn back to TVD for the remainder of the season. So Van Dyke, he gets thrust into a tough spot there last night, okay? That was like a Hollywood script. Now, had it been a movie, 
he would have scored. Miami would have tied the game up, won the game in overtime. Unfortunately, Hollywood is not always real life. Van Dyke has the chance to be a hero. Uh, unfortunately, he comes up short with a, a game ceiling interception. Okay. I don't know exactly why Jakari Brown hasn't played at all yet this year. I wish he had played yesterday, and I hope they find a way to use him over these next two games, but it does look like Tyler Van Dyke is quarterback one again. And just want to tell you, as we all should be, I am putting all of my support behind Tyler Van Dyke. I would love to see him end this difficult season on a high note, okay? He needs to play with a chip on his shoulder. I was talking about this with Malik Rozier, former Miami Hurricanes quarterback who I do the postgame shows with. You know, Van Dyke needs to take this opportunity to try to prove his doubters wrong, to try to prove the coaches who benched him wrong. Uh, you know, he's obviously playing maybe for an opportunity to try and bump up his draft stock, uh, which has, you know, not been a good place these last couple of months. Perhaps he's playing to impress another team that he might land in in the transfer portal or... Perhaps he's trying to reclaim his spot here at the University of Miami. No matter what his motivation is, I hope Tyler Van Dyke plays his heart out, and I hope he proves all the doubters wrong out there. I am rooting for number nine for the rest of this season. Let's talk about Jacoby George. He's Miami's best offensive player yesterday. Without number three, Miami's offense... <laughs> Outside of some good runs in the first half, I'm not forgetting about Don Chaney, who was awesome in that first half, and uh, Mark Fletcher had some big plays in that first half as well. But without Jacoby George in the passing game, Miami's passing game would have been completely non-existent. Jacoby George has 153 receiving yards and two touchdowns. He's the first ACC player in the last 20 years to have 150-plus receiving yards and two-plus receiving touchdowns against an AP Top 5 opponent. That's what he did against Florida State. And his 85-yard receiving touchdown was the longest passing touchdown for Miami against Florida State of all time. Unfortunately, Jacoby George didn't have enough help, okay? This Miami Hurricanes offense, they've had their share of issues. It's not just been on Tyler Van Dyke or quarterback play throughout the year. I agree to an extent that you know, a lot of you out there, you crave more creativity and more aggression from Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator. I can agree with that. This is the same OC who said back in September, quote, you get conservative, you get beat. Guess what? Miami's been very conservative for the past month and a half. Miami has also had virtually no production from tight ends in the passing game. And this team is still in need of help at wide receiver. Jacoby George looked great yesterday, and he's had some awesome moments throughout this year. But in that game against Florida State, nobody else did much of anything. I'm not seeing guys creating separation. They're either not open or the quarterback is throwing into NFL-type throwing windows because they're not creating enough separation. NFL windows where the pass has to be totally pinpoint. Davia Restrepo had a couple of drops yesterday. There were other times when he probably should have been thrown to and wasn't, but he didn't take advantage of his opportunities. And most of all, guys, this team needs more speed in general. Part of that is not using your speed enough, right? Because Brashard Smith, I still think, needs more reps. I'd like to see Chris Johnson involved in the offense. Uh, but, you know, you still need to go out and try to continue to recruit faster players because they're not getting enough separation. You know, on offense, Miami was coaching basically not to lose, okay? Okay. You weren't really coaching to win the game with electric offense. You were coaching to manage the game and not to lose. I didn't love this, okay? I thought the possession that they had in the third quarter, tied at 13, when they ran the football three straight times, three and out and punted, I thought that that was a missed opportunity to dial something up and being a little bit more aggressive. We're going to talk about the defense when we come back because they did step up. The defense continues to play championship caliber ball. Uh, obviously, it wasn't perfect. 38-yard touchdown given up. There were some lapses, but the defense played well enough to win that game. And we're going to welcome in our very good friend, Ray Borg. You know him as G.A. Kane fan. He's going to help me add some perspective, not only to the loss, because, again, uh, there was a lot of things that I liked about the way Miami fought and the way Miami competed and the way that Emory Williams took care of the football. At the end of the day, this is Miami losing to Florida State. It hurts my soul. It hurts my soul anytime we lose to those guys up in Tallahassee. So Ray is going to help us gain some perspective on this. You know what you want to do, my friends? 
you want to keep it locked right here to Locked On Canes. Guys, you're looking for last-minute tickets. This should not be a stressful experience. I look forward to logging into the Game Time app and seeing the types of last-minute deals that I can get, my friends. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sporting events, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Guys, you can see the view right from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without the hidden fees, all right? Buy tickets in seconds with two taps, guys, and the game time guarantee means you're always going to get the best price. If you find tickets in the game in the same section and row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. You want to download the game time app. Create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. To the everydayers, guys, if you want to take your everyday or experience to the next level, sign up for our exclusive texting service through locked on canes insiders i include the link in the show description below i gave you guys the heads up yesterday that emory williams was going to start we talk a lot of recruiting on there one-on-one questions i'll answer those right there uh locked on canes insiders click the link below try it free for two weeks then if you like it you can opt in for 4.99 a month we give you a lot of added value on there talking about added value that's the sort of thing we're going to get here from my pal Ray, uh, I see. I love it. You're supporting the Miami gear from head to toe. Uh, you know, Ray, I, I want to take a deep dive on the defense in a second, but I, I'd love to know kind of your takeaways on offense with Emory Williams because Miami did compete literally until the final drive yesterday. What were your thoughts? No, I, I agree with that. I figured the offense would be very conservative. I was very pleased with the quarterback starting decision. I think there was no way he could start Van Dyke because to me it, it was kind of like comments we've had offline of you cannot send the message if you have to compete every week to earn your position and to keep it. Van Dyke clearly has not earned that as a starting position, unfortunately. And I was a big fan of him coming out of Connecticut. Um, he looked really good his first year. In the second year, you know, with a all his with a horrible offensive coordinator, it just didn't work out. Um, I was pleased the, the young man played well. It crushed me to see him broke it, break his arm at least. I saw that when I saw that happen, I immediately knew he had at least broken his arm. Um, I had read that he was in the hospital overnight in Tallahassee, so I don't know if that also means you know an elbow. Is it a wrist? Is it a shoulder? Do we have him for spring? And to me, that also affects the future of Miami's quarterback situation. Now we've got Judd Anderson coming in from my home, my now my state, a home state of Georgia, coming in next year. Who's going to? It's now is he going to be? going to be coming in in spring is going to force in are we going to see a year rehab dealing with emory that's a real concern i have right now yeah no you're right about that how that that's going to that that's going to impact the strategy right like it's hard for me to imagine van dyke stays at miami um you know we we all kind of wonder about jakari brown because there i've obviously you know you just look at the fact that he hasn't played you have to wonder if he's thinking about hitting the portal um, Emory Williams is obviously staying at Miami, but how long is his recovery going to be? Judd is Judd Anderson's going to be coming in as a true freshman. Miami, I think Ray, they're going to have to be more than likely aggressive in the transfer portal, right? Like quarterback was not a transfer portal priority for them last season because they were all in on Tyler Van Dyke. Uh, but quarterback to me has to be a priority and something we've learned these last couple of years you're going to have some starting capable guys in the portal. This is not like you're looking at sloppy seconds. Like you're, you're going to have some guys who are high level starters who could be available. I think Miami needs to be aggressive. And do you think that they're going to need to be aggressive specifically for a dual threat type? Because, you know, that just, it, it gives you such an advantage this day and age in college football. And I think in, in the Dawson offense as well, to have a dual threat, I think would be a major load off the shoulders. At least one dual throw would be nice. Yeah. Judd Anderson is basically considered a drop back quarterback, um, professional style, which is good. Um, I'm actually a little going to be a little curveball here. I'm a little bit, I think a little bit differently, Alex. I want Brown to start next week. Let's find what this kid's got. 
Yeah. He can be redshirted. Start him now. I look at Van Dyke, and you know how much I like them. And I come, you know, I, and I don't like the way defense freedom. So if he fails as a Miami quarterback, that doesn't mean he's a horrible human being. He didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't arrested. He didn't assault a woman. He just couldn't make it to the next level. Um, I'd rather see Jacob Brown. Let's see what he's got because Van Dyke, to me, I was not happy with his sideline presence. He wasn't holding a clipboard. He didn't have a headset on. He didn't see me interacting with any of the offensive staff. He was talking with Brown during the game. You know, he was – Emory was going off sidelines. They were having some conversations, but he wasn't active. He wasn't engaged, and that kind of bothered me a lot. Mm. Um, man, uh, how did you feel about the way Shannon Dawson and Mario Cristobal handed the game plan and the play calling? Because I – I'm so open-minded on this stuff, Ray. I, I I see the fan complaints, and I I, I sympathize with it. Uh, and, and there were certain drives, like I mentioned, um, tied at 13. Miami ran three straight plays and punted and just ran into a brick wall three straight times. You know, it seemed like a wasted opportunity to at least try to throw downfield a little bit. Uh, I didn't like the way that they actually managed the clock at the end of the second quarter where they rushed to run that play only to then just kind of let all the time tick away after that to kick the field goal. I thought that that clock management was a little bit off, but at the same time, it's like people just want to, all these armchair coaches are like, I would have called this play and that play. And what are they doing? Uh, we have to understand the tightrope that you're walking when you're facing a top 25 defense, a top four team on the road in the lion's den with a 19 year old true freshman quarterback uh, they have to protect him. And with all the turnovers that Miami, you know, Van Dyke, obviously being the guy guilty of most of that, but still with all the turnovers that offense had been committing priority. Number one was take care of the football and allow our defense to give us a chance to win this game. So how did you feel about the play calling and the philosophy? Cause they, they were walking a difficult tightrope last night. Yeah, it was a mixture of things. I don't think the offensive quarter has the full confidence of that offense right now. Um, how many penalties? I'm from looking at my notes. That Morgora had. I'm probably mispronouncing his name. At least two key holding penalties. Yeah, now we know again. It. It's yeah. like holding. You know, it's going to be him. You know, he's yeah. a young, true freshman. IMG. He's going to be great. We'll probably all laugh at his junior, senior year when he's one of the best offensive linemen in the league, in the ACC. And hopefully, the NCAA. Um, the play calling is what he's given. But like you said, we don't have the receivers. That has been a key. The concern was the depth. Trader and Carr come in next year. Five four-star athletes. They're going to get playing time immediately. Um, I wish they would give the quarterback a little more options, but I also hear the tight ends aren't developing well. They're pretty good at blocking, but their hands are kind of off, and they did kind of miss a few passes. Restrepo did as well, too. There's some difficult ones, but sorry, you're the best receiver in the league. You're one of the best in the ACC. You've got to catch those balls, period. Um, offensive line, they did well, but they keep running the ball, but I still wish they see a better rotation running back, but I think he's – He's playing the hand he's given without trying to give the game away because if you did it at Florida State and they start turning over the ball on risky plays with a true freshman quarterback, then this could have been an ugly game where they lost. They could have lost by 20 or 25 or, God forbid, last year they lost by 40 in oh. Miami. So I, I understand that, but it's like we all want to keep firing coordinators now. It's the end thing. I'm like, what do we want to do? We want to fire him. Hey, Ken Dorsey's going to get fired in Buffalo, right? So we'll bring Ken Dorsey down make him offensive coordinator, bring him to Miami, right? I mean, what do we want to do? Do we need to stay the course and keep have what we have? Defensive coordinator has done very well. We've made the right decision so far. Let's keep the drive. Let's keep moving forward. Keep this class together. We knew that it was going to be a tough call to get you know win this game. They did well. It wasn't a blowout. I think he can keep this recruiting class together and maybe get a few more players. He will get a quarterback in the transfer portal. I'm hoping he can keep Brown. I hope he realizes, and I'm going to forget his name, but the gentleman that moved the transfer to Missouri, he oh, starts stringing. Garcia. Yeah. So just because you're going to transfer doesn't mean you're going to get a starting position at another SEC right. school, SEC school. You're there. You're like, you know the culture. You know, let's see what comes in. Maybe change positions, but let's see what Brown's got next week. But just jumping off and transferring doesn't always work. What was there, a 1,000 players a couple years ago in the football transfer portal, and like only half got picked up? You know, I want to talk about the defense when we come back. Nice to have uh, our pal Ray Borg stopping by the G.A. Kane fan himself. You guys want to keep it locked right here. We'll continue the conversation. We're only getting started, man. I know it's a tough Sunday. Miami lost to Florida State, but let's talk through it right here on Locked on Canes. Guys, 
Jace Medical, they are providing amazing life-saving services. We spend a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up together on wins and losses, who starts and who sits. I'm thankful for that connection we have. I want our chat to be a little bit more personal now. I just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. So you realize what that means. You're on extended travel. You encounter supply chain shortages. You're covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can refill your generics for Cialis, Viagra, or Revatio. And this is possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code Locked On at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. I'm thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year's supply. I also ordered the antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would get peace of mind by having a year's supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com and see if it's offered to you. Remember to use promo code Locked On for $20 off your purchase. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Make sure every Friday you're tuning in to Locked on College Football Kickoff Live, 11 a.m. to noon every single week. So Miami's defense, they were lights out, okay? They weren't perfect, but they were good enough to win that game. Lance Guidry is the crown jewel of this coaching staff, okay? The defensive line and linebackers, they played their butts off. Kiko Maui Noah was the top defender for me for the Canes. Team high, nine tackles, two sacks, two and a half TFL. Wesley Besaint was all over the field with three and a half tackles for loss. Corey Flagg had a big TFL on Jordan Travis. Now, Ray, let's talk a little bit about Wes Besaint because much like uh, Maui Noah a few weeks ago, Wes Besaint had two points he should have scored that were taken off the board. Yep. I, I don't know what the hell a safety is anymore. The ACC officials sure as hell don't know what a safety is. I mean, this is the second time this year, and, and in this case, um, Wes Besaint, he, when Jordan Travis, who's moving backwards into the end zone to try to elude him, by the time Besaint is tackling him and the knee goes down for Travis, the ball is inside the end zone. If that's not a safety, I don't know what is. And these dummy ACC officials... They even took the time to review it and still ruled it not a safety. I, I, I can't wait to hear Cristobal's take on it tomorrow. Well, if you do, you better get your beeper out because all the swear words because he lost it on the sideline report. Yeah. It was not recorded. Probably was, and they just never played it. But he evidently had a lot of explosives dealing with that play, and it was a horrible call. And even the announcing staff, which was horrible for ABC yesterday, was like, I don't understand this whatsoever. And then they had the referee analysis going, I don't see what they're seeing. But it's typical ACC referees. It's the worst of the big conferences. Everyone knows that. Um, and it was this horrible call. Uh, luckily, it didn't really kill the momentum for Miami because they still kept battling and they didn't quit. Last year, they would have quit. But I don't get the player, but the defense played well. What concerned me a little bit, it was Bain. They actually really targeted on Bain. He had one tackle and a couple assists. Young freshman, he's going to learn to break those double teams, but they really keyed in on him. And they also went after the soft corners because a couple of guys were hurt or injured. And they and they, we don't have a lot of depth there right now. It's going to change next year. And they beat up on that, and some of our safeties blew some coverages. But they played fairly well. Um, Benson did really well. I thought it was kind of yeah. funny that Benson could have gone to Miami, but Miami didn't want him. And it was like he was yeah, afraid he was injured. They, they didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't do that. You bring in your own people. Yeah. You bring yeah. in your own people. Thank you know you. the culture you want to set. He, Mario made a huge mistake not bringing him in. He ran for close to 100 yards. That's why I was listening to the postgame show that Joel did. They were talking about net rushing 45, 55 yards against Florida State. No, no, no. He ran for, they ran for about 100 from the running backs, and that's what counts. I don't like, they used the quarterback sure. sacks the through the yards, rushing yeah. yards, which I don't believe in because that doesn't mean anything but the defensive line. Right. What they did stop, really stopping the running game and preventing scores or field goals, things of that nature. But the defense played well, and they seemed to tighten up a little bit more in the second half. Um, we got lucky with that helmet hit on the quarterback. He could have been a jack. He did his crown. It was like a bang, bang play, but that is the rules. You keep your neck up. You don't bend your head down. Yeah. You know, one, one thing I'll add, and, and you're not wrong about the secondary, but I will just say, given, 
given how much the depth was tested going up against those receivers. I, I thought Damari Brown and Jadis Richard, who started that game at corner, which are, are not the names who have been starting this year. And, and Damari Brown is a true freshman. Jadis Richard's a second year guy. I thought they did an admirable job. I mean, seeing Damari Brown have a lot of solid coverage against Keon Coleman, who to me is one of the very best wide receivers in the entire country, not just the ACC or whatever. Um, you know, I, I know that Keon still made his presence felt in the second half. In the first half, he was shut out. In the second half, he got his touchdown. He had his big punt return, which is obviously not Damari Brown's fault on that play. But, you know, holding Keon Coleman to four catches for 24 yards, uh, I you could have signed me up for that before the game. So I, I thought that that was, that was a good job with the next man up mentality. And, uh, and man, so Ray... Um, how you feeling heading into uh into the final home game of the year against Louisville? I you know I I, I liked your idea about giving Jakari Brown an opportunity to start these next couple of games. I don't know if that's going to happen. I would lean to it probably not happening only because he hasn't played all year. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're interested in using Jakari for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, I know I know he wanted to redshirt this year, but the red shirt is already secured whether he plays the rest of the year or not. So I I'm assuming it's probably going to be Tyler Van Dyke the rest of the way. And, and Louisville's not an easy out. No, it's not Louisville. Um, you know, it was right there for the number two position for the ACC title game between them yeah. and North Carolina. And that's what they're going to be playing for. They're a very well coached team with Brom and Louisville is the surprise of the ACC this year. And they're doing very well. But it's more of like everyone thought Van Dyke's going to start against Florida State. It's a guarantee. And then they may make a switch out. I said, there's no way he's going to do that. And there's no way he's going to start Van Dyke again. It's going to have to be. It's going to be Brown unless there's something behind the scenes we don't know about. Um, and there's a reason why Brown's not getting any playing time. Um, for whatever reason, a disciplinary issue, God forbid, uh, or something else that we're not aware of. But it's going to be the get Louisville is going to be a tough out to say the least, but it could be a scenario where the ACC is always worried at the end of the year and you always get these crazy upsets. Um, you know, who thought Syracuse was going to beat Pitt, Pittsburgh this year? You know, could, you know, who thought Duke was going to beat Clemson at the beginning of the year? There could be that opportunity if they play well and they play, and they're, I'd say it's conservative, kill the clock, run the ball, play great defense. Defense secondary, yes, it's admiral and it's great for the future. Um, but that's going to be the Achilles heel because they can drop the ball back. Now, I don't know how many, you know, we'll know later in the week or realistically an hour before game time, yeah. kind of like with the Van Dyke benching, if our defensive backs can come back healthy. And that's going to be the key. Um, and I also think it's going to help. It's going to be a noon game. I think at night it's been a little bit, and it sounds strange, but a little bit shaky this year. Um, but there's an opportunity, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be an easy out, which I'm more of like, that's why I started my to Corey Brown. Let's just get all the young players out there. I know there's a lot of seniors and juniors, you know, have, have earned their, you know, have been there a while, stuck it out, survived the coaching changes, the assistant changes, but they have to look toward the future and get some of the best players out there and get them the experience they need. We're not going to win the ACC. We're not going to the title game. Was it, does Bulls really count anymore? Unless you're in the playoff or in a specific, and no one cares. It's it's used for extra practices now and getting your yeah. players playing time. So let's focus in on that and move in the future and recruit it. But, I hope they could beat Louisville. Right now, I'm not sure. I think it all depends on who's healthy. Let's find out the list and then move forward. But it's going to be a tough out. I'm hoping, but it's going to be tough. Well, guys, uh, let us know in the comments who you'd like to start at quarterback for Miami against Louisville. Uh, obviously, Emory Williams, I do not expect to be available. So do you go with Tyler Van Dyke or – do you want Jakari Brown to get the opportunity? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button, the like button. If you're watching us on YouTube, if you're listening to the audio version, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, make sure to give us a five-star rating, subscribe to our channel, and we will talk to you guys again tomorrow on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.